Histology Laboratory for Skeletal Muscle, Anatomy 2203. Examine slide number 28 for skeletal muscle. Note that both a longitudinal and a cross-sectional profile are present on this particular slide. This is the longitudinal section through a mass of skeletal muscle cells or fibers. The arrow is now in the center of one of these large, giant, multinucleated cells, and tracing it along its length. So this entire structure, as indicated by the pointer, is a skeletal muscle fiber or cell. There are very large cells, uh, much like a cylinder, uh, and may contain several hundred nuclei. Many of the nuclei associated with this particular cell are being illustrated by the pointer. The other thing one should note is their location, their peripheral location along the cell. Once one sees a nucleus such as here or here, you're getting sort of an oblique or tangential section through this particular uh, cell. So, this unit here is a skeletal muscle cell, a skeletal muscle cell here, a skeletal muscle cell here, another one shown here, one here, and one here. Long, elongated cylindrical shaped cells that are multinucleated, the nuclei of which have a peripheral location. These are the same skeletal muscle fibers as seen at high magnification. A single muscle cell is shown here and the location of its nuclei along the periphery of this particular fiber. Please recall that skeletal muscle is one of the striated forms of muscle and even though they are very very faint on this particular uh, preparation as they are with most H&E, if one looks very very carefully one can see some faint banding in this region of the arrow. Now a trick that you might employ is to drop or uh, eliminate the condenser lens, flip it out and use uh, direct light without the condensers as I'm doing here and now one can visualize at least some of this banding that we're talking about and you can at least see the dark band or the A band and the lighter staining I band. So this is about as good as you can see it with an H and E preparation. Alternating light and dark bands, the A and I bands and these longitudinal cuts of the skeletal muscle cell or fiber. And here you can see some more here along this area, the alternating dark and light bands. So sometimes if you either reduce the light of your microscope or pull out the condenser lens, uh, this is, you can actually visualize uh, this banding, the striations of skeletal muscle uh, on the H&E preparation. Now this is a field of skeletal muscle cells or fibers, but seen in cross-section rather than in longitudinal section. So here's a portion of a fascicle of skeletal muscle shown here. In each one of these cylindrical units cut in cross section, like as illustrated here, is a skeletal muscle cell or fiber. So each one of these units is a skeletal fiber or cell cut in cross section. Now compare those with the longitudinal profile which looked like elongated ribbon-like structures. So this is the cross-section of that same cell and once again note that the position of the nuclei is always at the periphery. Sort of forced out or pushed out due to the concentration of myofibrils that occupy the center of these very large cells and gives it this sort of pink uh, cast at this particular magnification. So this is the nucleus of a skeletal muscle cell, the nucleus of a skeletal muscle cell. This one that's pulled apart from its neighbors is a little bit more easily visualized. You can see this is definitely the skeletal muscle 
uh, cell nucleus, another one is shown here, and another one here, as they are always located at the periphery of these elongated cylindrical type cells. This is a cross section of some of those same skeletal muscle cells, but seen at extreme magnification. So this is a cell here, its nuclear profiles, and another cell shown here. And note as we look at these individual cells that the interior is not that homogeneous pink mass as we noted earlier, but it's made up of sort of a fibrillar type of uh, material. I'm trying to focus this. It looks much better under the microscope than it's being able to photograph. Nonetheless, you can see it, it has sort of a beaded texture uh, to it, this pink interior. And what those are, are this beaded uh, interior represents cross-sectional profiles of the myofibrils. You can kind of make this out here and here uh, right around the arrow. But they, of course, are much easier and much more readily interpreted when you see them uh, in longitudinal section. This is a low power view of that cross section of skeletal muscle to illustrate muscle fascicles or groups of skeletal muscle cells. This is the fascicle is shown here. One is shown here as being crossed by the arrow. A portion of another is shown here. Another fascicle is shown here. This wispy type of connective tissue that extends around and sort of holds the outlines the uh, muscle fascicle, an example would be right at the tip of the arrow, is uh, paramyosin. Endomyosin, of course, would be around individual skeletal muscle cells or fibers, which is very, very difficult to see on this particular preparation, a very delicate connective tissue that will hold capillaries. The paramyosium is a little bit more robust, also containing some of the larger vessels, as you can see, but once again is very scant in this particular uh, preparation and hard to uh, visualize. This is an electron micrograph of the interior of a skeletal muscle shell showing individual myofibrils. One is shown here. It extends from this point to this point. Another is shown here. Another one is shown here, and one down at the bottom as well. You can see that individual myofibrils actually have that banding as observed with the uh, light microscope. This is an example of the A band, as indicated by the pointer. The I band, because of its light standing, is shown here. Note that it is transected or bisected by the Z line. This would be another A band another I band with the Z line running down its center. The distance between two Z lines, as you recall, is that functional unit of skeletal muscle known as the sarcomere. The center of the A band, which is shown here, also is sort of transected or bisected at its center by an H zone. I'm putting the edge of the uh, tip of the arrow right on the boundaries of this H zone. It extends from about here to here on this side. So that's the H band. And then down its center is a thin line at the end of the tip of the arrow, the so-called M line, as indicated by the very tip of the arrow. And this particular myofibril, once again, you can see the H band extends from here to here from here to here, and down its center, this dense little line, the M line. Now these examples that have been demonstrated on electron micrograph should be found and compared to that model of the ultrastructure of a skeletal muscle cell available in the laboratory. One should be able to find the A band, the I band, the Z line, and other subcomponents of the uh, myofibril within the skeletal muscle cell.